Zong Nanhai is teeming with eunuchs, a sign of the regime's demise. Video goes viral, foreign students in China receive full scholarships and pocket money. U.S. military officer, Xi Jinping may lose control over Chinese military. Back to the traditional era of made in USA, the U.S. industry no longer wants to be held hostage by China. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Zong Nanhai is teeming with eunuchs, a sign of the regime's demise. In recent years, a culture of flattery and sycophancy has become popular within the Chinese Communist Party. Many people sold their souls to show loyalty to Xi Jinping, who has since consolidated his power through a third term, resulting in their successful advancement at the 20th Party Congress. As a result, almost all of the current political bureau members who were re-elected are supporters of Xi Jinping. They control the CCP's core institutions, including the government and the military. Among the seven members of the standing committee, she is confidants in Li Hongzhong, Kai Qi, Ding Xuexiang, and Li Shi. After Li Chang became premier of the state council, his first major move was to issue a new version of the rules of procedure of the state council that deleted the ideas of former party leaders. The state council now only recognizes Xi Jinping thought, and decision-making power has been handed over to the CCP Central Committee with Xi as the core. Li Chang was the first high-ranking CCP member to say in public that he supported Xi Jinping. Kai Qi, a member of the Political Bureau Standing Committee and Director of the Central Office, who currently holds multiple positions, once praised Xi Jinping for his leadership style, strategic vision, and steering ability. He also described Xi Jinping as the backbone, pillar, and pivot of the party. Li Hongzhong, the current first vice chairman of the National People's Congress of the CCP, is the most blatant in his loyalty. He has praised the CCP for achieving world-renowned achievements, which are fundamentally due to General Secretary Xi Jinping's leadership. On November 7 of last year, an old article titled The Country Should Beware of Unicization was published by Chinese scholar and president of Capital Medical University, Rao Yi, in the U.S.-China Perception Monitor. The article pointed out that unicization is the behavior of irresponsibly flattering superiors, pleasing the powerful, having no sense of right and wrong, and using all means to reap benefits. The only driving force behind unicization behavior is a struggle for interests, which lacks a sense of right and wrong. According to the article, the harm of unicization extends beyond mere flattery and pleasing superiors to include, among other things, a multifaceted presentation of external warfare, internal warfare, long-term internal strife, and enthusiasm for internal strife. The Communist Party's Red Dynasty has come to an end. Political commentator Yushan once wrote in the Epoch Times that, from a historical perspective, the culture of flattery and praise prevalent among the upper echelons is a sign of a regime's demise. Yushan cites two historical examples to support his argument. In the late Eastern Jin Dynasty, the usurper Huan Xian's regime fell a few months after his flatterer Yin Zhongwen pleased him greatly with his sycophantic remarks. Another example is from the early days of the Republic of China when Yuan Shikai's attempt to proclaim himself emperor failed, and he regretted falling for the frequent advice from various factions. Ultimately, Yuan Shikai was only able to reign as emperor for 83 days before being forced to abdicate and subsequently dying of depression. Yushan believes that the Communist Party's Red Dynasty has come to an end. Whatever reforms the CCP authorities attempt, they are merely attempting to keep power and are forced to rely on superficial measures to conceal the fragility of their regime's final days. After losing their true power, Li Chang's new government can only rely on flattery and kowtowing to demonstrate their loyalty. They are forced to manage everything in accordance with Xi Jinping's struggle as the mainstay ideology, which will exacerbate Li Keqiang's mess. Taiwan's Up Media published an article by Du Jing on April 7 of this year, claiming that the new governing team led by Xi Jinping has silenced all the different voices that existed under Li Keqiang, and that everything now revolves around Xi's voice. A culture of flattery pervades the entire officialdom, with the primary goal of nauseatingly glorifying Xi. According to Yushan, the Communist Party has replaced the contents of brainwashing with the new packaging of Xi Jinping thought 
a second round of spiritual castration of the Chinese people. This round of spiritual castration targets the so-called political elites first, then spreads to the whole party and the nation, with the ultimate goal of achieving nationwide unicization. The article also says that history shows that Xi Jinping's fall is inevitable because his regime has already been unicized, just like the last emperor of the Southern Han Dynasty, Lu Chang. Video goes viral, foreign students in China receive full scholarships and pocket money. The scandal about the CCP giving foreign students high scholarships has once again gotten a lot of attention. According to the Epoch Times, a video has captured a Mexican student who traveled from afar to study in China, forsaking his plan to study in the United States. The CCP's offer of highly attractive treatment was the primary reason for his decision. In the video, the Mexican student said that Xi'an Jiaodong University, where he is studying, offers full tuition waivers and a monthly stipend of at least 500 yuan to international students, with some students receiving up to 5,000 yuan per month, about 727 US dollars. The student also said that applying to Xi'an Jiaodong University isn't too hard because you only need to pass the HSK Level 4, and being an international student is an advantage. Furthermore, he showed the international students' dormitory, which revealed that, while the single rooms for foreign students were not large, they were well equipped. Chinese college students who live in China, on the other hand, usually live with more than one roommate. The video has sparked heated discussions and dissatisfaction among netizens. Some internet users said, we should strongly demand that foreign students studying in China no longer get special treatment. How can we cancel it when even the United Nations relies on foreign votes? Every year, when the US and Europe criticize our country for its democracy and human rights at the UN, a bunch of hooligans come out to show support. This is the real reason for the huge foreign aid. On April 6, the WeChat account Wai Guanian published an article titled Foreign Students at Xi'an Jiaodong University Can Receive a Monthly Allowance of Up to 5,000 Yuan, Shocking the Chinese People. The article expressed indignation, this is not studying, it's taking advantage of China. This 5,000 yuan is equivalent to the monthly salary of many workers in some cities. Others work hard for a whole month just to earn more than 5,000. But these students come here to study and can get more than 5,000, which is really outrageous. The article argues, they are taking Chinese money, living in Chinese housing, and using Chinese resources. These resources could have been provided to domestic students, but they are being used by foreigners. It's not fair to offer such good conditions to others and be so harsh on their own people. Moreover, Epoch Times reporters also found out on April 8 that the Xi'an municipal government had created a scholarship program for international students called the Belt and Road Scholarship on the International Education College of Xi'an Jiaodong University's website. The scholarship's objective is to provide tuition discounts for foreign students, and even undergraduate students can have their tuition fees waived by 100%, 50%, or 30%. To apply for the scholarship at Xi'an Jiaodong University, foreign students must be nationals of a belt and road country. Despite the Mexican student mentioned in the above video not being from a belt and road country initiated by the CCP, Official media reports from the CCP in 2020 suggest that the Belt and Road Initiative is continuously expanding in Latin America and is also being significantly promoted in the five countries of Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, Colombia, and the Bahamas, even though they have not signed cooperation documents. U.S. military officer, Xi Jinping may lose control over Chinese military. According to the Chinese edition of the Epoch Times, Rear Admiral Mike Studeman, Director of Intelligence at the U.S. Navy, warned on April 5 that there are strong indications that Xi Jinping, the CCP's leader and chairman of the Central Military Commission, may be losing control over his military and people's armed police in their gray zone operations. He said in a speech at the Sea Air Space Exposition, We believe that this is a result of China's clumsy, CCP governance model and the dangers of dictatorship. Rear Admiral Studeman gave some examples of gray zone operations, like how Beijing bothers Vietnamese and Filipino fishermen by ramming other boats or spraying them with water from high-powered water cannons. 
The CCP military also often tries to bother U.S. Navy ships in the South China Sea by flying dangerously close to U.S. and Australian military planes. He also mentioned a previous incident where a Chinese pilot flew in front of an Australian P-8 plane and threw out a foil in the shape of metallic debris, which caused the engine of the Australian plane to stop working. These foils are usually used to distract air-to-air -air missiles. Fortunately, the Australian pilot was lucky and landed safely. Studman stated that Xi Jinping or other high-ranking officials in the CCP may not fully understand the severity and frequency of such incidents. He stated, the operational style of authoritarian countries is dangerous. Under dictatorial rule, the truth does not always spread quickly. If it is bad news, sometimes it is mixed with false information as it rises to the top. We are seeing some events unfold. According to the Epoch Times, Studman had previously publicly called attention to the CCP's threats, believed that it was America's number one enemy, and stated that the American public's view of the CCP was too naive. He said that the United States had long ignored the problems caused by the CCP and that we are facing a knowledge crisis and China's blindness problem. However, he now expressed his pleasure at seeing many Americans becoming more aware of the CCP's threats due to the incident involving Chinese spy balloons. The Chinese government said that the balloons were only used for research and that they accidentally flew into U.S. airspace. The Pentagon strongly opposed this claim and stated that the balloons, which were later recovered by the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard, were intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance assets. Back to the traditional era of made in USA, the US industry no longer wants to be held hostage by China. The Wall Street Journal recently published an article titled America is Back in the Factory Business, which stated that America is reviving factories after moving them abroad to take advantage of lower labor costs, highlighting a positive trend in response to the US government's call for made in USA. The US manufacturing industry no longer wants to be held hostage by China. According to data from the U.S. Census Bureau, in 2022, the United States spent a staggering $108 billion on restarting factories, more than it spent on building schools, healthcare centers, or office buildings. This record-breaking investment in building new factories shows how serious the U.S. is about becoming self-reliant and bringing back the busy production atmosphere of the past. Additionally, it will help to reduce dependence on external supply chains as well as eliminate issues such as forced technology transfer in countries like China. U.S. factories are seeing an increase in manufacturing activity in both product production and the development of new factory systems, driven by incentives for using green energy, a locally trained workforce, and high automation rates. With the support of billions in incentives, new factories are springing up in urban areas, rural areas, deserts, and new factory towns primarily in high-tech industries like semiconductors and electric vehicle batteries. Companies that once relied solely on low-cost countries to produce household goods are now returning to their homelands after the lessons learned from the COVID-19 pandemic and the Chinese government's attitude of preventing U.S. goods from being re-imported to the U.S. Throughout American history, manufacturing has been an integral part of American life and strength. Paul Revere opened a foundry that produced bells and cannons, and Henry Ford's assembly line helped create affordable cars for the masses. The American industry greatly contributed to the Allied victory in World War II, with almost half of private sector employees working in factories. Encouragement from government and consumers After years of factories closing because of automation and companies going overseas to find cheaper labor, the U.S. manufacturing sector is making a big move toward reshoring. After China joined the World Trade Organization and globalization became a buzzword, the country's manufacturing capacity, which had been growing at a steady rate of around 4% per year for decades, stagnated and then plummeted. Many American goods are made in China, resulting in the loss of millions of jobs in the United States. However, since last year, manufacturing has been growing at its fastest pace since 2015, as shortages and delays in supplies caused by the pandemic highlighted the risks of relying on Chinese factories. American companies are now rethinking their supply chains, 
and the benefits of bringing production home to be better able to respond to urgent needs. According to Chris Snyder, an industry analyst, the COVID pandemic has highlighted the risks of relying on imports that are subject to the policies of other countries, and this trend towards reshoring is likely to continue. David Mendel, professor of engineering and manufacturing history at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, said, the factory boom signals the beginning of a new cycle. Manufacturing has always been an important part of the American story since time immemorial, and what is happening now represents a return to tradition. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to get the latest video, and thank you for tuning in.